Okay. Okay, so let me share screen. Okay, just give me a sec, guys. Again, everyone, for those of you who've just come in, if you don't mind sharing where you're from and any question at all, as I mentioned, it would be great for you to type in the group chat and at the end of our presentation, we'll go through them with you, okay? So officially welcome everybody. In, essentially from all around the world, I can see that we've got people uh, from um, majority, of course, Australia, but also um, some from Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong, and um, even one of my friends who is my TLS student from the US. Okay, so welcome uh, to today's um, special presentation on digestive health, uh, which I named it as a starting point with huge benefits because as you may or may not know, you know, gut health or digestive health is really intricately connected to virtually every aspect of your health. So if we are looking at what's going on right now with the COVID-19, we all need to have good immunity and gut health is really closely related to that. If you got good gut health, then you will have good total well-being in terms of, you know, your immune system as well. So that's why, you know, it's really pertinent today that we actually talk about this topic. And I'm sure that majority of you were able to attend um, Dr. Y. Z. Wong and um, uh, her registered nurse, uh, Zaleng Jing's uh, presentation on COVID-19 and how to win against it last night. And um, they did mention a little bit about gut health, but um, obviously because of the vast information that they were delivering, lecturing to us last night, there wasn't enough time. So it's really good today we've got actually, uh, apart from me, uh, three other um, professionals, you know, nurses as well as health um, support worker, uh, sharing about this very, very important topic in digestive health, how to optimize it. But not only that, we've got a lot of guests right here who've experienced being healed uh, you know, with their gut disorder. And I'm going to be inviting a couple of them to share with us on their testimonial as well. So let's get started. Now, let me just start off with um, giving you an overview of digestion, because of course, when it comes to having a healthy digestive system or gut health, digestion is something that we all need to be educated on. So first, our bodies really need food, as you all know, to provide it with sufficient energy, vitamins and minerals. So that's why, of course, every day we need to eat healthy food, you know, the type of food that will provide us with the nutrients that we need. Not only that, we need energy, right? And so all of that is to do with the type of food that we, we eat. So that's why as a transition lifestyle system, um, TLS, uh, you know, wellness and weight management coach, I always look at the importance of food. And, and that's why I actually took it upon myself to study uh, a diploma in nutrition and coaching as well, because I personally understand the importance of food. And the job of our digestive system is to break down the food that we eat into substances that the various organs and cells in our body that we can use. So that's why it's very important for us to understand that, you know, the digestive system is help us to break down the food that we eat. So for us to fully understand the health of your digestion or your digestive system, you need to first understand that, you know, uh, the system itself or the guts actually acts in different stages to help us digest our food. Now, in terms of digestion, there are two different types of um, areas. One is the mechanical digestion. The other one is the chemical digestion. So in the chemical digestion, there are three stages. The first stage is the chewing of the food in your mouth. So a lot of people think, you know, um, the first part of, you know, digestion is the, your stomach. In fact, that is not it. It's actually the third part of the mechanical digestion. The first stage is the chewing. So whatever food that you actually put into your mouth, the chewing side of it has 
to be the very important first stage. You can't just chew really quickly and then swallow it and then let it digest. You need to really chew quite thoroughly. And then the second step is, of course, the swallowing. Once you chew, uh, the food will be swallowed. And as it swallows, as you can see the um, guts on the left-hand side there, the, the um, graphic is the esophagus, you know, the, uh, the uh, system there. And then once it's swallowed, it will go into our stomach. And when it goes to the stomach, then the food can hang out there for hours on end, like any time between 40 minutes to four hours, in fact. So when that is actually being hang out, like in the stomach, we have enzymes in the stomach that actually will start working by breaking down whatever foods that we have like proteins or carbohydrates or micronutrients, macronutrients, whatever fats or, uh, you know, type of um, nutrients, right, that our bodies can use from the food, then it also kills a lot of the bacteria bacteria in the process. So the interesting thing is that, you know, even before we eat our uh, bodies, digestive action begins to take place. So that's why it's very important for us to actually understand that the chewing, in fact, our brain starts working well before we, you know, start eating. So, so let's just give you a bit of an example. Just imagine if you close your eyes for like one second, there is a lemon right in front of you. And if you're going to be actually putting the lemon into your mouth, even smelling it before putting it into your mouth, you would already have that sense of the saliva glands, the mouth watering experience. And that is to do with, you know, our brain as well as um, the um, sensing of the smelling. So that's why we use the five senses as we eat. Now, the second part of digestion, as I mentioned, is the chemical digestion. Chemical digestion includes the two stages between small and large intestines. So stage four is the small intestine, which is the first part of the intestine that works with the liquids from the liver and pancreas to continue to break down the food. So as we go through the stomach, once it actually, you know, uh, has uh, the process uh, of being digested through there, going into the small intestine, then it will break down the food. Then the second part is where our food gets absorbed. So after the digestion finishes, then it will get absorbed from the intestine into our body through the bloodstream. So then the final stage of our digestion is the large intestine, where any food that the body doesn't need or cannot use gets sent to and later leave the body as waste. So that is basically the five stages of our digestive system, the work that it does. Now, did you know that 35% of the total energy consumed by a daily Australian was from foods with little nutritional value? And I'm pretty sure that it would be more or less the same in the US or even in Asia. A lot of those, um, you know, uh, foods that we eat actually don't have nutritional value. And one in four Australian adults, which is 25%, are not really eating enough vegetables. We need five to nine servings of vegetables every single day. If I was to ask, you know, all 50 of you here, how many of you can say that you eat five to nine servings of vegetables? I would say for sure that majority of you wouldn't be able to. Not only that, if you say to me, yes, I do eat vegetables every single day, five to nine servings, but if they're not fresh, they can be depleted of a lot of the vegetable um, you know, ingredients in there as well. So even if you do most days, like he told me, but it may not be the best type of, um, you know, with a lot of the vegetables that include include um, the nutrients because of the depletion of the farming, you know, that is happening, especially in Australia, we are one of the most depleted in terms of the soil. So if you have a look, you know, in um, a lot of the uh, research done, you know, uh, comparing to many, many years ago, a lot of the vegetables that we consume, by the time it comes from the farm to the supermarket or the market that we buy, and especially nowadays, we eat so much of the frozen vegetables, they're not fresh, 
that your, you know, the type of, veg, um, you know, nutrients are not actually nearly enough, even if you have enough servings, right? Now, and 30% of Australians are eating less than uh, fruits and vegetables than 15 years ago, and only 7% of Australians are eating the daily recommended, as I mentioned, five servings. So really not enough. So half of the Australian population complain of some digestive problems in any 12 month period. So what I'd like to ask you, answer me through the group chat if you like. How many of you recently or in the last six months or so or in a 12 month period have experienced some digestive discomfort? Whether it's bloating, whether it's constipation, whether it's painful, um, you know, stomach, sore, uh, whatever it is that you've had some discomfort in your digestive tracts, which is um, causing you some bloating, diarrhea, and all sorts of things, then write it down, yeah? Uh, just type it in your group chat, yeah? So I can see that, yeah, bloating, diarrhea is really quite common, in fact. And it actually also affects, you know, our holistic health as well. Now, so these are some of the examples. Uh, poor eating habits can cause some of these issues that we've all been typing in, whether it's like, um, even like Candy says, she's got, um, yeah, um, rectal bleeding, of course, is part of it. Bloating after eating a lot of food as well. Indigestion is really, really common. And incomplete digestion is also another issue because if you actually try to digest, say the stomach doesn't have uh, the proper enzymes that help you, then of course it will cause um, issues as well. Heartburn can be part of digestive issues as well, Martha. And gas, bloating, stomach cramps, constipation, diarrhea, majority of you have already typed in our group chat that some of you have experienced and in fact is really, really common. Anyone has any question, please just type in the group chat and then I'll be able to answer them later on, okay? Um, so that we, we can just go through this quickly without, you know, um, uh, interruption. But feel free to just keep typing in the group chat, okay? Now, why are some of us, or majority of us in, in fast, uh, have issues with um, our digestive system or the problems that we've mentioned, like bloating, indigestion, constipation, etc. Well, there are two main things. One is we have excess of unhealthy nutrients. Second is we don't have enough healthy nutrients. So if you have a look at your left, sugar, salt, alcohol, smokes, greases, um, you know, saturated fats or like trans fat even more so, artificial colorings, preservatives, these are the things that are unhealthy nutrients. Yet so much, um, you know, of this type of food is eaten and consumed by us. So when we have a lot of sugar, too much sugar, and too much salt, and we drink too much alcohol, for example, then we will cause our digestive tract to be in you know, some issues, right? Whereas if you don't have enough of the right-hand side, whether it's protein, vegetable, vitamins, minerals, fiber, water, complex, good carbohydrates, fruits and vegetables, and unsaturated fats, etc., then you also will face the issues of the digestive tract. So if any one of you who've actually typed in here where you've experienced any type of stomach pain, bloating, digestion, uh, diarrhea, uh, et cetera, et cetera, then it could be because of one of the reasons that you can see whether you've consumed unhealthy nutrients, too much dairy even that can cause that, or you don't have nearly enough of healthy nutrients as well. So a lot of us, yes, cannot eat gluten because gluten is actually also unhealthy nutrients. When you actually have gluten, it can cause a lot of you know, heartburn and stomach pain and bloating as well, for sure. Now, what are the risk factors, right? For those of us who've mentioned that we may have experienced digestive disorders, below are some of the risk factors that I would like you all to pay attention and try to avoid, okay? First three um, things that are important to, aware, to be aware of, four things in terms of food and lifestyle, is that eating foods that do not include a significant amount of fiber and vegetables. You know, for those of you who understand um, TLS that, that are, you know, part of my group or that you've learned about TLS, you will understand a very famous saying, and that is, you know, fiber, uh, uh, protein and fiber in every meal makes losing weight or healthy 
eating, no big deal. So that's why if you don't have sufficient fiber, vegetables, then you're not able to have a healthy digestive system. And number two is anyone who is overweight or has high fat diet is also at risk of developing gallstone and that is also one of the digestive disorders. Now number three is too much of fast food, processed food is also a cause of stomach upset. So it's very important don't you know have too much um, fast food, junk food or processed food um, that is not good for your digestion. And the fourth thing is if you drink alcohol, you smoke cigarettes or engage in a lot of emotional or stress eating, then you will also have stomach cramp. The, the cramp is also caused by a lot of this unhealthy uh, you know, types of food as well. So that's why it's very, very important that um, your food and lifestyle has to be in line with, you know, causing you uh, to have the uh, proper digestion, okay? And number two is age. As people grow older, you know, the motility, you know, the way that they move um, of the intestinal tract also decreases. So that means your small intestine, your large intestine will move a bit slower. And as a result, food and the waste also move um, a lot slower. Uh, that will mean that the um, risk of constipation will possibly increase. So that's why a lot of the people that have constipation tend to be maybe a little bit more mature than younger people. The third thing that can be a risk factor for digestive disorder is family history. So some digestive disorders are genetic, you know, um, heredit um, hereditary, that which means that it can actually run in families. Um, now, um, family members of people who have been diagnosed with genetic digestive disorder should be offered tests to see if they are at risk of developing digestive disorder as well. Okay, so gut health is basically, uh, you know, the function of um, uh, the gut microbiome. Microbiome is a very important um, concept that I'm going to be sharing with you about. But basically, the uh, idea of gastrointestinal tract is basically what we call the gut. The gut is from the mouth where you start, you know, uh, putting the food in to the rectum, which is, you know, where the bottom is really. The whole tract collectively is, you know, as termed as the gut, which is the whole digestive system. So when we, what we usually say gut health is basically the digestive health as well, is all the different areas from the mouth to your rectum. So the, the gut contains a number of microorganisms which are not visible with the naked eye, but in fact, we've got like billions and billions of microorganisms in our gut microbiome. And it plays a very important role in your health by helping control digestion and benefit your immune system, your digestive system, in fact, your total well-being uh, so that you can have a, you know, a really good health. An imbalance of unhealthy um, and healthy microbes in the intestines may contribute to weight gain, high blood sugar level, high cholesterol, and other disorders as well. So that's why if your gut is not healthy, that can also cause weight gain. In fact, you know, a lot of the other issues um, like, you know, cholesterol and um, other odd disorders and, you know, degenerative disorders as well. So the other thing, you know, to do with gut health is the importance of um, understanding gut related disorders. I won't go into too much details because um, one of our um, uh, presenters later on will share, but basically just to understand that common gut related disorders can be caused by change in eating habits, your bowel movement. So if you don't actually go to the toilet to do number two, your bowel movements enough, um, or you have constipation or even medications can actually cause all of us to have some form of gut related disorders or digestive disorders. So apart from some of the most common gut related disorders, you would have some, you come across, you know, like constipation that you've all mentioned just now or um, constipation, diarrhea. It, one very um, common thing is also called irritable bowel syndrome. Um, so that is also gut related. So what can you do for a healthy gut? And, and we'll be going through in a little bit more details by the other presenters. But, you know, in a nutshell, the three things here I would like you to uh, pay attention to is to try and eat varieties of different foods, um, you know, macronutrients, including um, 
uh, as I mentioned, protein and fibers, but of course, whole grains, lentils, legumes, and fermented foods are really good for your gut health as well. Things like kimchi, yogurt, and also probiotics types of food as well. Number two is stress. Stress is really, really not good for you because it has a negative impact, you know, uh, of the tiny bugs living in your gut. And healthy lifestyle is able to help you to be healthy in your guts as well. So in today's world of processed food and a lot of lifestyle that is not healthy, our body actually needs to work harder to break down food and absorb, you know, our nutrients as well. So let me just quickly um, go into the group chat before I introduce our next speaker uh, to see if there is any question. Um, all right, so um, Heath mentioned here that the irony is that the only uh, the gluten in the West that causes the issues due to the GMO, that's true. Uh, eating wheat in Mediterranean uh, countries doesn't cause the same issues. Yeah, in fact, in the Western world, um, gluten issues tend to be a lot more. Mediterranean diet is something that I um, always recommend such as alkaline diet, as well as, of course, low glycemic impact eating. And for those of you who are actually doing TLS, you would understand a lot more about all these different types of um, eating habits. But definitely, you're right in saying that heat Mediterranean types of um, nutritional eating is really helpful as well. And of course, they won't experience the issues of um, uh, gluten. Um, of, of course, as well. And yep, Simon said so rightly that taking probiotics definitely help. And we're going to be going through a bit of that at the end of this presentation about probiotics. All right, so next I have the privilege of um, introducing um, Rose. Um, Rose is um, going to be sharing with us about a very important um, topic, and that is uh, the uh, digestive health and ultimate allot and why aloe vera is so important. So Rose, are you um, able to talk? Can you yes. just, yep, good. Okay, I'll just um, show your screen and then I'll um, just give me a second. All right. Okay, so thank you, Rose. Uh, I'll just uh, pass the time to you then. Okay, please go ahead, Rose. Thank you. Can we start from the first um, slide, please? Okay. Hi, guys. Good afternoon or good evening. I'm Rose Omar. Uh, thanks, Kitty, for inviting me and uh, to present this topic. Welcome, everybody. Um, today's uh, topic is uh, digestive health with ultimate aloe. And I'll be going through the history and a little bit of the digestive system, uh, features and benefits of the ultimate aloe, as well as, why is that being repeated? Oh, but the third one is supposed to be a testimonial of some of my um, clients. Um, I brought in one of my aloe vera plant here. Can you guys see it? Kitty, can you see it? Uh, yes, I can see it. That's beautiful. Yes. So I've got, there's about 250 species of aloe vera on the planet. I've got six of them, right? But do you know which one is good for you and which one is not? Because, you know, not all of them are edible. So, can't tell the difference. Instead, uh. of, instead of taking a risk of, uh, you know, um, oh, taking the wrong aloe vera, I might as well just drink this one, right? Because we have the best on the planet. So, because if you have the wrong aloe vera, it could be actually a very, very bad laxative. Instead of um, going once or twice a day, you'll be going so many times a day. So don't take uh, the risk. So um, I, a little bit background on myself, I am a trainer now in uh, healthcare services and aged care. I used to be a um, personal carer in an aged care. So achieving good digestive health is very important for all of us, especially during these trial times. And being a trainer uh, in healthcare, I've uh, realized that um, most illnesses and diseases caused by unhealthy gut. 
So the history of aloe vera goes way back to 2100s uh, before the common era. Um, and in the 1500s, uh, the um, Egyptians, they think, they find that this uh, plant is an immortality plant. So those who will, you know, the Egyptians, they mummified themselves because they feel that they're going to uh, live forever. So those who die in the Egyptian world, the, the guests that come for the funeral will actually bring an aloe vera plant. So this plant is a, phase, a first aid plant. It's called a wand of heaven and nature's tonic. In the olden days, people usually use it externally, especially when you have burns and wounds and stuff like that. But people have found that when you drink it, it also heals the inside of your body. Um, can we go to the next slide, please, Kitty? So why do we drink um, aloe vera? Because aloe contains several natural plant enzymes. In my next slides, I will explain to you that uh, there are two different types of en enzymes, uh, plant enzymes as well as human enzymes. Um, the aloe vera, which is a plant enzyme, um, are alkaline. So this can help uh, break down the proteins, fats, and starch during your digestion. Um, Lily, um, sorry, not Lily, Kitty has explained that the digestion process, there are plenty of uh, processes uh, or sets. Um, so starting from when you put the food into your mouth until it goes out, um, the digestion, the digestion uh, processes um, takes place. So with the LO, because it is alkaline, it is able to work in the large intestine where um, usually um, only the acid, acidic portion of your body works. So with the aloe vera, it is able to work in the large intestine. So most of us, especially Asians, we cook our vegetable. And sometimes we overcook it. So we will actually destroy all the enzymes uh, here in the Western countries. However, we like to take our vegetable raw. Me personally, growing up for 46 years, I do not take vegetable at all. The most vegetable I took is when I did my 21 days TLS. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I could actually feel the difference for me as well as for my hubby. So now, uh, next slide, please, uh, Kitty. Here, this slide tells you the difference between a human enzyme and the uh, plant enzymes. Human enzymes are able to work in the small intestines, where plant enzymes are able to work in the acidic environment of the stomach, as I mentioned earlier. So here, they are able to begin the digestive pro process much uh, sooner and speeding up the digestion. That's why, um, according to um, Lian, Lian Ho in Singapore, that it is good to take one uh, or two um, dosage before your meals and then take it again after your meals as well together with the digestive enzyme that we have. Can I have the next slide, please? This, sorry, the reason why Kitty is controlling my slides is because when I have it from my side, it's going to freeze. Oh, it's gone. Hang on. Uh, the next one, benefits, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the benefits of our aloe vera is that we have 13 out of the 17 vitamins and minerals required in our body. So the vitamins that we have are beta carotene, vitamin C, vitamin E, B2, B1, B3, B12, folic acid, choline, and the minerals, we have calcium, magnesium, zinc, chromium, 
sodium, iron, and potassium. Where else can you get all this, you know, with just um, 60 ounces of, so say, sorry, 60 mils of um, aloe vera? So the minerals usually is not something that you can build inside um, your body. Uh, you have to take it from the food that you eat. Can I have the next slide, please? There are so many benefits of um, aloe vera. Mostly we know uh, for external usage. For internal, it helps with the digestive uh, because it has um, I, a, aloin, which is an anthraquinone that gives aloe vera its laxative properties and may help treat constipation. However, in our ultimate aloe, this process is minima, um, it minimizes the alloin. So um, you, it will not act like a crazy laxative that, that, that um, makes you go to the toilet so many times. So it also helps with heartburn relief researches. Um, belching and for those of you who've got uh, who are diabetic it also helps uh, lower your blood sugar level and um, this is a big deal because um, uh, our pure flavored aloe vera does not contain any sugar at all next slide please kitty Next slide, Kitty. So our uh, ultimate ELO, um, what we boast about is that we have the IASC, which is International ELO Science Council. This seal, no one else has it. You know, If you go shopping uh, and you buy aloe vera on the shelf, from the shelf in the supermarket, you will never, never, never find IASC on it. So the ultimate aloe contains active aloe to enhance aloe vera's biological activity. It has uh, virtually free of emodine and aloin. This is the one that causes uh, um, you to go to the toilet a million times or gastro. Um, ultimate aloe is harvested and processed according to the strictest quality standards to ensure the body receives maximum benefit. So if you um, realize, um, in order for it, for in order for you to get the best quality uh, of aloe vera, it has to be processed within four to six hours from the time that you cut the leaf of the plant. Um, according to the Health Life magazine. When you buy an aloe juice, what do you look for? You have to look for the information whether it is purified, whether it's decolorized, or is it organic, or is it safety uh, tested. All this, I don't know about other products, but our ultimate aloe has it. Next. So this um, logo that we have on our ultimate ELO, IASE. I've mentioned it earlier, it is an International ELO Science Council. It's one way to know that you are getting very, very high quality aloe vera. It is a seal and certified from the International ELO Science Council, demonstrating that the quality of ELO in ultimate ELO juice has been validated and is certified by an independent group of professionals. So how are we different from uh, other products is that we have the active aloe, which contains isolated and concentrated bioactive polysaccharides. Next um, slide, please, Kitty. A friend of mine who drinks our ultimate aloe, she says that ours tastes um, nice. Um, it's not that sour, it's not that sweet, it's just nice but others will actually make her feel bloated, the ones that she buys from, um, from off the shelf, even though it says 100% pure. The reason why ours doesn't have that funny taste 
is because of our polysaccharides. It is processed within the four to six hours. So what are polysaccharides? Uh, next slide, please. Polysaccharides literally means sugars, many, many, many different types of sugars. It's a long chain of smaller carbohydrate molecules. These are the, this is the thing that gives you energy when um, you drink it. And it's also used for structures such as the cell walls and cell membranes in your body. So lack of polysaccharides, I presume, will cause us to sag and you know, grow old. Um, so the active aloe guarantee uh, provides customers assurance that these aloe ingredients retains the beneficial properties of the plant. I'm going to go into the testimonial. Um, I've got three clients who really, 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 really love our um, uh, aloe vera. Um, the first one, uh, she had a endometriosis. Uh, sorry, she had a hysterectomy uh, due to endometriosis, which caused her bladder to be just located. So when I visited her at the hospital, I gave her two bottles of um, our aloe vera and she kept on drinking it for the two days that she got it. She got it and she finished two bottles in two days. The doctor was very surprised that the amount of um, uh, bleeding reduced great um, greatly because um, I guess the healing power in our aloe vera helps to, to do that. So she um, vows, vouch for our uh, aloe vera and she feels very light uh, when she drinks our aloe vera. Mm. Um, second one is acid reflux and heartburn. That's my own husband. He suffers from acid reflux, heartburn, and during the 21 days of us doing the TLS, I noticed that he doesn't complain about, oh, I have heartburn, I have heartburn. <laughs> <laughs> and um, sometimes <laughs> I guess, <laughs> sorry, any question? Uh, no, no, no. I'll just say, yay, TLS. <laughs> yay, TLS. And because we've been uh, eating uh, vegetables, 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 um, sometimes he, he, when he is anxious, uh, I notice that uh, when he speaks, maybe his breath doesn't feel as uh, minty as it should be, <laughs> you know? Uh -huh. But during our TLS, because of the um, vegetables as well as our aloe vera, um, you know, his breath smells, smells good and he doesn't have uh, any heartburn. So mm. that's a good one too. Uh, third one, um, Stephen, Stephen, who was here the other day? Stephen Hugh. Right. Yeah, he says that always uh, pay it forward, you know, give away things if, when you can afford it. So I find that our aloe vera is good to when you go for parties and whatnot, you know, when somebody invites you over instead of bringing chocolates and stuff like that. Bring, a, bring three different uh, aloe vera flavors, put a huge ribbon on it and give it to them. Because I gave this lady who is an asylum seeker, uh, Somalian lady, you know, you always think that oh, the, these people may not have the buying power, but wrong. During this uh, coronavirus where people are losing jobs and whatnot, they get money from the government still, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they have the buying power and they actually do care about their health. So this lady cooked some lamb thingy for me and I went over and I gave her a bottle of um, aloe vera. That night itself, she gave me a call and she says, uh, teacher, where can I get this uh, aloe vera? Very good, very clean, very clean. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, oh, I can get it for you. How many bottles do you want? I want three. So I was surprised that, she, you know, she's the last person I thought would be my customer. So she bought three uh, of the aloe vera. She, she's got six children. So all six of them drink it. Her husband drinks it. And she's been promoting it to 
all her friends um, our aloe vera because she says clean, clean, very clean. So, <laughs> 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 so I guess, um, yeah, that's all that I have to share regarding our aloe vera today. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was amazing. Wow, what a lot of information that we've just in such a short time have learned about ultimate aloe and aloe vera. So let's see if you've, um, anyone has any question. If you do, just type it in there. Very, very well done, in fact, yes. Let's have a look. Um, all right. Um, wow, there's a lot of comments here. Um, my friend from the US, Candy, says, I love aloe. I used to take aloe vera supplements in high school and everyone thought I was crazy. <laughs> well, I suppose supplements, um, you're talking about tablets, are you? Um, it's different from, of course, what um, Rose has just shared with us. It's actually a bottle uh, where you just drink, you know, the 150%, um, which is a lot more than general supplements. But yeah, we can talk about that later. But de definitely aloe vera, whether it's supplements or normal aloe vera is good. What is the sugar content, if any, in our ultimate aloe, Helen asked. Um, yeah, Lily answered, uh, yeah, natural aloe has no sugar at all. And of course, um, we do have two other uh, flavors. We have the uh, kiwi fruit and um, strawberry. Heath, I say kiwi fruit, not kiwi, <laughs> because Heath is from, uh, from New Zealand and he doesn't like people saying kiwi. I do not. Um, <laughs> the kiwi fruit. This is, it is not a small flightless bird with exactly. a long, a long beak. Kiwi is the bird, <laughs> kiwi is the people. Vera down here also is from Auckland. So you, you two can talk about that. But really from now on everyone, just a little education. Don't say strawberry and kiwi aloe. No, it's strawberry and kiwi <laughs> fruit aloe. Anyway, so and then the other one is <laughs> just, just a bit of laughter. Apple and cranberry, which is my favorite as well. Um, that has a very, very little uh, sugar, which is natural sugar with the, you know, the, the um, uh, sugar content of oh. the fruit as well. Yeah. But generally, if you really need uh, to heal yourself using sugar, I mean, using uh, aloe, then the um, natural one is one that we would recommend. Okay. Um, how does the aloe compare with the iso isotonic isochrome for balancing blood sugar? Well, they're different in that, I mean, of course, if you're doing the, um, the TLS program with the detox, you take both to help you balance your blood sugar. But um, generally, uh, the, uh, you know, the aloe is, or, or do, do you, um, Rose, want to answer that question because you were talking about um, aloe. No, go ahead, Kitty. Okay, all right. Um, so basically, isochrome um, has a lot more, because uh, it's got chromium and it's got, um, you know, a, a chromium as well as um, CoQ10. So that's actually got not just the blood sugar balancing uh, property, whereas with aloe, as, as um, uh, Rose has explained very, very clearly, it's got like 200 like of all the different nutrients so it's sort of just different way but I would say you know to work together synergistically take both the ultimate aloe as well as the isochrome that's why it's included in the our local um, the 30-day fast track uh, fast um, um, jump start TLS now all right so Wendy what's the difference uh, between the benefits uh, of uh, digestive enzyme and aloe vera juice. All right, well, um, I won't answer that question because uh, later on after this, um, both Jian as well as Lei Hun will talk about digestive enzyme and you will see the difference. Okay, so Martha, you know why your heartburn is gone because you've been taking aloe. That's right, because aloe definitely, I have seen even with my own um, loved ones, I've got people who've had uh, heartburn in the past, been able to um, drink uh, aloe to be able to reduce that. So even to the point that it's um, no longer happening. So that is good to know, Martha. Um, Christine, digestive enzymes help break down foods and allows us to absorb them better. Aloe helps with healing the digestive tract as well as the skin too, definitely. Wonderful. Thank you, Rose. You did such a great job in providing us health, um, the health benefits of aloe as well as how he, it particularly helped with the gut health and the um, digestive um, 
system as well. So, yeah, candy, um, definitely liquid is better than pills for sure. No, uh, no doubt about that. Um, Kathy, how do I explain in layman terms to someone that he's uh, taking too much medication that it is affecting his bowel issues, digestive system? Well, basically, you can just explain that, you know, with, um, with pills, drugs, or medications, they do have their side effects. And if you are able to take this, all these natural products that we are explaining and, and sharing today, that will definitely help. Um, so that's as simple as that, right? Okay, so let's go through um, our next um, presenter's uh, uh, slides, which uh, is Jian. Uh, so, Jian, if you can just unmute yourself and I'll share your screen. Okay, do you want to test your mic? I. Uh, yep, good. Can you hear me? Yep, you're right there. Okay, so I'll help you also do the um, PowerPoint if you like. Yep. All right, so you, you can get started. Thank you, Jian. Hi. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Gyan here. I've been nursing for many, many years now. Um, I, I live in Melbourne. Um, thank you, Kitty, very much for the chance to talk about my experience on gut health. Um, a, bit, a, a, bit, a little nervous because this is my first time on Zoom presentation. And please excuse me if I make mistakes. <laughs> no, you won't. You're a nurse and you know a lot more than many of us. <laughs> I know, but it's different. This is my first <laughs> no, I no think I can see people's face if I'm if it's not zooming, like if you are in front of just... I understand, yeah, it's a little different, but you're doing amazing, Jian. <laughs> Thank you. So like I say, I, I have been a nurse for many years. Um a lot of um uh, experience about seeing many patients having problem with gut issues. So, but me, myself, I have been uh, suffering from arthritis for many, many years. And I have been on rheumatoid, med, rheumatoid arthritis medication, steroid. And uh, next slide, please, uh, Kitty, sorry. So I've been on rheumatoid arthritis treatment for many, many years um, with steroids and painkillers. So it's been like 15 to 20 years. So the side effect of the medication has affected my gut badly, leading to chronic constipation, feeling bloated and uncomfortable. A lot of burping. Sometimes I can burp, burp continuously from 10 to 15 minutes without stopping. And also did have experience bleeding um, uh, per rectum because of the chronic constipation. And then I was diagnosed as gluten intolerance in 2008. And also have tried various constipation relief medications such as Douglas, Senna, Coloxyl, high fiber diet and did a lot of scopes and everything, but it didn't help me. Condition was becoming bad to worse. But lucky for me in June, 2018, I was introduced to isotonic products. Uh, when I was introduced to N and started taking OPC3 multivitamins, digestive enzyme, ultimate allo, and advanced B complex. Next slide, yeah, okay. So um, after the first third week of taking uh, of OPC3, two serves each morning and evening, single dose of digestive enzyme after every big meals, a glass of ultimate aloe, 60 ml in 250 ml of water twice a day. I also put it in a big jug and take it to work. And um, remain like still to laxative to ease the constipation for the 
two months that I was taking OPC3 and digestive enzyme. After two months, I noticed a difference because it has been a chronic one. So it took me more than two to three weeks. It took me two months to notice the difference. So I was going to toilet like twice or thrice a week, which I was only going twice or once a week for about six to seven years. That, that was bad. And after the third month, including, I included at once B complex, I got better results. Bowel opened more frequently in the week, like three to five times a week, which, which is like winning a lotto in that sense, you know, mm. a lotto in for, for my gut health. Next one. And now currently I'm taking digestive enzyme at once B complex OPC3. Th those are the products in the photograph that I'm taking now. And magnesium, calcium, vitamin C. So magnesium and calcium helps with the muscles relaxation and muscle uh, combining with vi vitamin C and B complex it helps to, with the muscle functions. So I guess after the introduction of B-complex and magnesium really, really helped me. And of course the digestive enzyme. Uh, I think the digestive enzyme is really good because I felt better. I, I can feel the difference. Mm. Uh, the bloating pro problem and uh, burping has like really gone it is i i don't really uh, experience that anymore even after eating meat so the effect of poor digestion can cause incomplete it is due to the incomplete digestion of food so when there is a complete digestion of food it causes a buildup of waste product or waste in the colon that can ferment and putrefy. Then it limits the colon's ability to absorb any additional nutrients or fluids. It also hinders peristaltic movement, which is important to push the products you know, from the stomach to mm. the intestine and intestine to the colon, colon to the rectum. And therefore, this will increase the possibility of constipation. Optimal digestion and elimination should be a priority in one's wellness approach. So with that, we also need to encourage oral fluid intake. And the key for good health, gut health is also is to help our body to better digest this food before it reaches the colon. So digestive enzyme, how, how, can, how can we do this? Beside a good balanced diet, supplementing with digestive enzyme can help improve digestion. But um, I find that people, some people, they are impatient. They want immediate results. But for me, it took from two months to eight months mm. to really get back to my no nearly normal um, uh, gut health. So I was a bit patient and it took time for me to, to see the result after eight months. After eight months, I can say that I, I, I'm, I'm good now. I'm really good. Mm -hmm. So that also reduces toxicity in the intestine and colon, and it improves elimination and reduces constipation. You see, constipation, you will know it's turning bad because once you start bleeding per rectum, it, it, it is a chronic sign. Yes. So sometimes it can be worse, you know. So why, why digestive enzymes supplement? Why do we need to take them? 
is to provide the necessary enzyme to adequately support the body's ability to digest food, to promote the degradation of proteins. Because sometimes when we eat some food, it, it, it doesn't get degraded well. And due to the stomach function, over the years, And the other one is to support the breakdown of complex macromolecules in energy sources, to promote the release of nutrients from food, to encourage and support the absorption and utilization of important nutrients. Next one, Kitty. So, for me, isotonic enzyme digestive enzyme has um, helped me with, uh, with my help, gut health. So our digestive formula, the multi-enzyme complex containing in the digestive uh, enzyme is uh, important. So we have got all these um, different type of enzyme that help to in the breakdown of the food. So amylase is important in starch hydrolyzing. I won't go into detail as much as um, just um, the general thing that is found in, in the digestive enzyme. Protease is important with protein hydrolyzing, lipase for fat, cellulase for cellulose, glucose, polymer, and hydrolyzing, lactase for lactose, hydrolyzing. So the, the, these are the enzymes that helps to break down all the different components of, of the food that we have. Next one. So digestive enzyme in general promotes healthy digestion. It supports the digestion of nutrients, relieves symptoms of stomach upsets, enhances immune system function, contains di digestive and a multi-enzyme blend of amylase, protease, cellulase, tylactase, and lipase, and additional amylase formulated replenish essential digestive enzymes. One serving supplies over 100 milligrams of key digestive enzymes. And uh, the conclusion is optimal digestion and elimination should be a priority in one's wellness approach. Isotonic digestive enzyme help to keep our digestive health on track. It's a, it's a unique trademarked blend of digestive enzyme mix supporting our digestive health efficient and convenient. So what I do now is I keep a bottle in my handbag, even if I go for functions. I have introduced to friends, like, you know, offer them after dinners or after dinner or any function. And of course they like it, there have been one or very few of them who had ordered, but they are not so interested as, as, as um, I think they need to buy them. So, but few of them has, uh, has, uh, has given positive feedback. So we are yet to promote them. Great. Thank you, Gian. Thank you. We appreciate your um, sharing. I think it's um, very important for us to understand that, you know, if we were to, of course, focus on lifestyle, that is important. Yes. But majority of the times, we don't live, you know, nearly as good, you know, a lifestyle as we would love to be. Like, just like what we're saying, how many of us can say that we eat five to nine servings of vegetables every day and they have to be, you know, good, um, healthy, uh, 
nutrients than vegetables, right? So if that's the case, then we definitely need supplementation to help us. And so that's, that's the kind of thing that, you know, I always explain to people why we do need supplements like digestive enzymes or the um, ultimate alloy and stuff like that. But um, yeah, thank you. You did a really great thank job. You. Very first time presenting on Zoom, uh -huh. right? Everyone, uh -huh. right? Agree with me? <laughs> yes, yes. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we all give her a round of applause, <laughs> even though we might not um, hear it. We are on muted. But let me see some of the question. Yeah, um, I think, um, just go back. Um, Wow, it's a lot of liquid. Um, okay, candy. I was advised to take the aloe vera for my skin, nail, hair, and to relieve stress. Yes, that's right. I mean, really, um, aloe vera is good for all around, all of your whole body, really. Um, skin particular, but yeah, but nail hair and everything release stress as well. Um, Philip asked um, how the aloe can be 150%. Um, well, it's 100% is the whole leaf itself, you know, the whole aloe vera gel, the leaf that um, uh, Rose was um, sharing, you know, the, the leaf itself. But then we also have 50% of the fiber, which is the active aloe. So you, if you have a look at the bottle, um, Philip, you will see that the, the aloe vera explanation of the, um, the leaf plus the 50% extra there. Okay, and um, candy, my concern is too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. So when it comes to pure things, even for health, I was taught in college, anything over 100% is considered overdosing. What is your take on that? Well, in this case, it's not actually overdosing because it's 150% of 50% of the active aloe as the powder, and the other one is just a leaf. So definitely not overdosing. But um, Good thing means that, you know, the things that we don't actually have enough with our existing lifestyle. So we need to supplement. So that means you are actually supplementing what you don't have enough. So it's not definitely not a bad thing. Hope that makes sense, Candy. And then, um, yeah, so everyone is really, uh, yep. So Philip, you, you understand now why it's 150%. Um, hundred percent. Oh, see, Ro, Rose also explained that hundred percent from the aloe vera gel and leave and fifty percent powder. Right? Um, awesome. So, Philip, uh, have a look at your um, uh, back office as well. That explains very clearly with the aloe with the hundred and fifty percent. And um, Michelle, great job. Everyone's just saying, yeah, Gian, fantastic, fantastic job. Um, and um, Wendy also asked at the end, uh, asked the difference between the aloe and digestive enzyme. Well, aloe is a plant-based, yes, and digestive enzyme, well, yeah, you can say it like that, but really uh, they have different functions. And so if you have a look at the two differences uh, of the presentations just now, and then now we've got Lei Hoon who will be going through um, even more details about some of the, um, uh, uh, the digestive enzymes um, properties as well as features and benefits. So Lei Hoon, I'll pass the time to you. Uh, Lei Hoon is, is another nurse uh, that we have in our community and you can just share your screen Lei Hoon um, and unmute yourself so that we can um, hear you. Thank you Lei Hoon. Mute. Hang on, share my screen. Hold a sec. Uh, how do I host? You can see share screen, the green button below, and then you click that and then you can share. Host disable power sharing screen. Apparently you've disabled me. Oh, I have to manually do. Yep, that's fine, should be okay now. Yep. There we go. While you're on it, I normally you know, have my ultimate aloe, add some water, and then I'll just drink it like that. Can you see my screen now? Um, no, not yet. Uh, I've got it up. Lehun, you have to click a green button on the right hand side to share. Did you click the share on the right? The, uh, the blue one, yeah. Yeah, Thank blue one. Blue one on the right hand side. The right hand side, there's a share, it says share. Let me click. word share. Did okay. Got share. I click on share and then 
then you have to choose a window so that it's a two-step process. And then at the top, your window should be sitting at the top corner. You see, yeah. This one? No. Yeah. Share. Here we are. Yep. We got it. Thank yep, you. Perfect. So just, just click on the PowerPoint presentation with your slides. I haven't got my thing yet. Hang on a sec. Cancel it. Oh. Sorry, guys. Lehun, when you when you choose to share your screen, you, you get those little little screen. You need to choose the correct one. So if you unshare and then you try again, and there should be multiple screens. So you need to choose the one where your PowerPoint is shown. Okay, this one then is trying. You unshare first, go down. Oopsie. Can you see? No. Oh. Oh, okay. okay. We click try that. No, you click the wrong one. one. You click your email. So, so just delete, close. I mean, uh, everything. We can't see. No, I. We can see your your email. Okay. <laughs> okay. You, how about I? I share from my screen. Okay, share from your screen because hang on. You unshare yourself. A moment. Actually, Sorry. we can see your your file explorer. Is, is that right? Is that where you are? Hang on. Let me close it. How about I close it first? One moment. Yeah, probably if you click on common gut problem link you have there, maybe it'll no? open. You go and open. Yeah. Can you see yeah, this open screen? that? Yes, yes. And then you go to the top. That will be your button. screen. Can you see that? Yes. Well, we double click that. Click. Open. Double click. Double click. Double click. Hang on. We've Put got that. a very helpful community, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'll move your cursor to the top. There's an open. See the open there? The, uh, the come down a bit to the left a bit. Come down to the left a bit. To the left. the left. See the open. Ah, you're going too far. Yes, you were there. Open. Just put oh, your no, cursor no. where the, the cursor common gut go problem to the right a bit. Um, You see the tick next to the tick. There's an open. Oh, oh correct. Oh my god. Oh my god. Come on. Okay. Have you got it? Click. You click? I did. No, double not. click. Double click. Go on the bottom uh down arrow. You know what? Um can you close it? Can you just unshare? I'll share it for you can you can stop the sharing because you are the host. You can stop stop the sharing and then share it from your side if you have the PowerPoint. Okay, you can't see it. Okay, share from your sin. I don't know I've done it, but it's just not working. All right, can you see my screen? So, uh, hang on, I do open, double click on open. Can you see my screen now, guys? No, no. no you, have to, uh, you have to you basically unshare. Um, yeah, I can't share without her unsharing, okay? So you, can, can. Like you, you are the host, you can stop her sharing. You are the host. Yeah. Okay, yep. I can see your screen now, Kitty. Ah, we can see your PowerPoint now. Excellent, well done. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Okay, now I'm going to start with playing a, a video which is going to explain about how enzyme works in your body, okay? Uh, is it going? Not working. Yep. Enzyme. Hey, Professor, just the other day, I saw this small man swallow an entire steak bigger than the size of his head. And it got me to thinking, how could he possibly digest all that in just a few hours? Well, the steak is first chewed in the mouth into bits and pieces that fall into the stomach. You might already know that the stomach contains a powerful acid that can dissolve even metals. But what you did not know is that this acid is not what ultimately breaks down the steak. No, it's very tiny and special molecules called enzymes that do the job. Strangely, these enzymes find the stomach acid a cozy place to work in. Whoa! It's like small piranhas finishing up a whale in a sea of acid. 
Imagine what I could do with that. <laughs> well, it doesn't work that way. What do you mean it doesn't work that way? I knew you were going to say that. To find out, you need to know what exactly enzymes are and how they work. Whenever you're ready, click next to continue. Oops, you've lost it. Can you go back? Um, let's, let's keep going, shall we? Yeah. You are right? Yeah, 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 just, okay, okay. we can just go from here, yeah. Okay. Um, now, now, where are you gonna? Are you controlling this now? Yes, I am. Okay, now I'm basically going to talk about uh, common gut problems. Um, in our, commonly there is like ulcerative colitis is one of the common ones. And you can see the two types of uh, images, one on the middle, it says normal colon where the lining is very smooth um, and they're all covered with uh, healthy epithelial cells. But on the other side, where it says ulcerative colitis, you've got basically ulcers in the colon and um, and because of the ulcers, the person will be having a lot of pain. But if you have ulcers in your mouth, obviously it's very, very sore. And can you imagine ulcers in your gut? The person will be having a severe pain, a lot of cramming, and they won't be able to eat. And because of that, they will be losing weight. And the food they take, all the nutrients will just be passing through and they will have diarrhea. So... This is one. The next one will be celiac disease. Um, celiac, again, in a normal healthy intestine, the lining of the intestine with the, uh, we've got F villi or the villi has got all these epithelial cells. And if the health if in celiac condition, these are very inflamed. So the normal one, you've got the finger like projections but in a celiac condition, because of the inflammation, they're all flattened. And again, the person will have a lot of pain, bloating, uh, a lot of discomfort, and uh, basically no nutrients, and they are very, very weak. And sometimes a lot of, a lot of pain. Um, the other thing, because the gut is unhealthy, you have, they are prone to infection. In a healthy gut, the villi are very, very close together and stops from bacteria going through. Uh, in an unhealthy one, there are big gaps in between them. So all these germs, bacteria, virus will seep through and then they enter into the bloodstream and make you sick. Um, next please. So there are two types of uh, infection. One from the virus and you quite often hear patient, uh, people talking about, I have got stomach flu or I've got gastroenteritis and they just run to the toilet until it settles. Um, the other one is bacterial infection and that with, if it's a bacterial infection with E. coli, Clostidium, all the different uh, bacteria, um, they are treated, can be treated with antibiotics. In chronic conditions where the person has irritable bowel um, and this can be quite an uncomfortable situation and it also affects their lifestyle, their work. Um, they sometimes they are so, so uncomfortable and in so much pain, they just lose their job because they just been going to the toilet, running the toilet, having so much pain, unable to work. And quite often they have depression because of their condition. Um, next please. Oops. Okay. Yeah. So, how do you have a healthier gut? And I think uh, all the previous speakers have touched on um, what to do, uh, how it works. But to maintain a good, healthy gut, uh, obviously you've got the lifestyle, having 
doing your exercises, eating a good diet, good healthy diet, not having large portions, small portions, frequent portions, which uh, Kitty of, often says that in her TRS training, because having big portions can be too overwhelming for your gut and it feels bloated and uncomfortable. And again, as um, Kitty was saying, you need to chew your food properly so that when they go down your uh, esophagus, down your gut, uh, the process of digestion is easier. And with all the enzymes acting on the food that you take, um, it then gets easily, more easily absorbed. How to uh, stress levels as well. If you are in this climate where COVID-19 is um, causing a lot of stress to everyone, uh, emotionally, with their jobs affected, or finance uh, affect, affected, um, so it's not going to be very good for your um, elementary system too. Mm -hmm. So taking your uh, enzymes, taking your probiotics, which the girls have covered previously, that will help with your absorption of your nutrients. And again, taking lots of fiber, fruits and vegetables, um, and making sure that you're, you've got good bowel action, get all get rid of your uh, waste from your body, mm. and that will help. And drinking plenty, plenty of water, at least eight glasses a day. Mm. So a healthy gut gets a healthy you, and hope everybody will maintain uh, good health. Um, again, with gut health, you have your probiotics, your digestive enzyme drink, isotonic ones, and your aloe vera. And I think this is um, digestive enzyme helps with your digestive health and keep it on track um, and supports our health efficiently. Um, with this digestive enzyme, we have isotonic form and we've all gone through that, um, how to mix our drink and you can take it before a meal and after a meal like Lee and Ho explains. Next please. Uh, uh. Yeah. We've seen this slide before many a time. Um, again, with the isotonic drink, it gets absorbed fairly quickly into the system and our nutrients get absorbed and gets better health. This has been covered by Gian, so I won't go through that. It will promote digestion. And on testimonial, on a personal note, I like to have my digestive enzyme. I have it every day with my lunch and my dinner because I sometimes overindulge and I feel a bit bloated and it helps with my digestion. Recently, my sister had her back surgery. She was in a lot of pain after surgery and she has nausea with her anesthesia. And because of the pain, she couldn't move very much. She feels bloated and she lost her appetite. So I gave her some digestive enzymes. Within five, 10 minutes, her symptoms were relieved. And within a couple of days, she was back to eating food and was able to walk. And she swears by it, she takes it now. My dad used to complain of indigestion as well. And uh, we gave him digestive enzyme and he also says that within a few minutes the ingest indigestion has uh, eased and he was able to have his meals. My daughter-in-law, she's very skeptical about all this. She was having severe abdominal cramps and I invited her to have some of these digestive enzymes and she took it reluctantly but she did and now she's very happy with it. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. So let me just uh, uh, share this um, video with you, uh, which is digestive enzyme that we can actually get, you know, those, uh, uh, the uh, ones that um, Jian and Lei Hun shared is actually the uh, bottle one, but this one we have with, you know, uh, probiotics in Ciders as well. So let today, me... today it's harder for your body to absorb nutrients. Isotonics digestive enzymes with probiotics provides your body with good bacteria to promote the absorption of nutrients. 
And our unique formula is pre-measured in convenient stick packs, making it perfect for on the go. Help keep your digestive health on track with Isotonics Digestive Enzymes with Probiotics. Yeah, so this one was, um, so there are two different ones. One is the bottle one, one is the stick one, so they can choose that. So just quickly before we end for today and then answer your questions, probiotics are the beneficial bacteria that work to help maintain an optimal bacterial balance in a digestive tract. So we've already uh, you know, ascertained the importance of probiotics you know, in our uh, gut health as well. So that's why we all need that because these are the helpful bacteria that will help us to be healthy, not only just around our gut, but in fact, you know, our whole body, uh, if we want to have better immune system as well, and it will help us to fight Bugs, just like um, Dr. Wong said yesterday, you can think of probiotics as the ladybirds in the garden that fight bugs and the bacteria. It actually control your garden pests. So if you have probiotics, then you can be assured that you know your uh, digestive um, tract as well as you know of course your gut is healthy. So what we have is a nutri clean probiotics um, along with some other ones, in fact. But this one is one that I personally really like. In fact, when we used to do TLS previously, when it wasn't available in Australia, we would get this nutri clean probiotics or nutri clean products from the US. And so this one is available from the US and it provides 10 different strains and 10 billion with a B active probiotic organisms called uh, CFUs, which stands for, um, you know, colony uh, forming units. So each strand has a unique purpose and the strands work synergistically to promote numerous areas of health from immunity to stomach comfort and bowel regularity. So as you can see, probiotics is not only useful for your gut health or for your digestive system, uh, with like stomach comfort and bowel regularity, but also immunity. So with COVID-19 that's happening or any time of the year when, you know, winter is coming, when we are more susceptible to having, you know, um, cold and flu, then this is also very helpful for your immune system. So NutriClean Probiotics uh, uses, uh, you know, a unique process that delivers highly viable probiotic organisms, far less susceptible to the effects of damaging environmental factors. So this extends the active shelf life of this product as well, which is amazing. And the other thing is that it also uses a technology called BioTrack, which is not available uh, in many other probiotics in the market. So you need to be aware of that. Our NutriClean probiotics are very unique and is a patented delivery system that protects probiotic organisms from stomach acid on their way to the intestinal tract, ensuring a significantly higher percentage of organisms reaches the intestine alive. So that means you don't have to be worried about, you know, a lot of the percentage being lost because of that biotrack technology. So that's why I would um, really highly recommend that you consider taking the NutriClean probiotics for optimal gut health in um, conjunction with, you know, the uh, digestive um, enzymes, as well as the ultimate aloe juice as well. So on that note, um, that's basically everything that we would like to share for today. Um, but I'd like to also, if you've got any question, answer them before we um, close off this uh, Zoom session. Thank you again very much to uh, the ladies that have shared um, with us. Um, they're all you know, in the health field. Um, so of course they have a wealth of knowledge. So thank you, Rose, and thank you, uh, Jian Lehun, uh, for your contribution today in sharing about this gut health. So let's have a look. Um, all right. So everyone, uh, a lot of people say thank you, Lehun. Thank you, Lehun. Thank you, Lehun. <laughs> uh, so uh, any other questions? Uh, so Candy says, always wondered how good bacteria lives healthy in containers. What if these good bacteria get sick then? we put them in our gut. Well, they won't, I mean, if they're good bacteria, then if they are not going to be put inside, I mean, they will just be um, moved out of our body, like, you know, uh, with as waste. Um, so they're natural. And um, if, if my customer does not want to take too many doses of their probiotic or digestive enzyme, would you recommend to take for gut health? Well, depending on um, which one suits 
you know, her, like, let's say if she likes the liquid form to drink it, then of course the ultimate aloe is good. But then really, you know, all of them that taste really good. So depending on the benefits that we've each shown uh, and what your customers, um, you know, uh, like uh, the taste of, I mean, I personally really like the taste of digestive enzyme. And that is normally taken before and after, whereas the ultimate aloe you can take any time at all. Whereas the, the probiotics are more, for more, I suppose, um, uh, people with issues uh, with gut health. So only if they have, you know, a lot of uh, extra issues. If they can't afford all three of them, then I would say go with the um, digestive enzymes and the um, ultimate aloe first. All right, so thank you everyone. Uh, so th I think that's basically it. If you've got any other questions, of course, you can always go back to the person who invited you to this uh, Zoom session. And um, I think I will just call it a day with this meeting and thank you everyone for being on um, and um, take note of our upcoming events. And we also have uh, with Hongling and myself, um, the TLS 101-201 training for those of you who want to have total well-being apart from gut health. And of course, you know, as we mentioned, lifestyle is extremely important in helping you to reach your total well-being as well as true uh, you know, um, weight management. So if you want to do that, then certainly encourage you to participate in our upcoming TLS uh, training, which will be on the 26th of um, April this month, uh, the last Sunday. All right, so until next time, everyone take care. If you want to um, just unmute yourself and say goodbye to everyone, and we will... Um, Bye. Bye. Thank you, Bye. Kitty, Bye. everyone. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Really appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.